going to, we're talking about miracles, um, the gifts of miracles. Uh, we're talking about power gifts. And so if you're just, if you're just visiting with us, we, we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. You'll read all of that, and, and you'll find nine gifts in there. And they're broken down in three different categories. Um, and and we, we've talked about the revelation gifts. Um, we, we've talked about uh, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, and discernment of spirit. How many, how many needs words of wisdom sometimes? How, how many needs wisdom? Uh, Solomon received wisdom because he asked for wisdom. And so we know the Holy Spirit is a giver of wisdom. He's a giver of knowledge. Sometimes, we, so, so, so you, you, you receive um, you know, knowledge is, is the word. Wisdom is what to do with the word that, that you received. And so I want us to make sure that we're, we're flowing in the Spirit. And when we're flowing in the Spirit, we, we, we expect to receive something from the Holy Spirit. And when you expect it and you know what it is, and then you know, a lot of times we get a word from the Lord and we know it's a word, we don't know what to do with it. Uh, so that, that word is, is, is the raw materials. That's, 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 the, that's just the, 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 the knowledge of it. But then the wisdom is like the instructions on what to do with it. And, and men, I know we, we don't like reading instructions. So, so, but the Holy Spirit, he's, he's, he's cool. He, he reads them for us. <laughs> he just speaks it into us. And so that's that. And then discernment, the discernment, the discernment of spirit to realize what spirit um, that, that you're dealing with. And so we, we learn about that, and that's revelation. Right now we're in power gifts. Uh, we're in power gifts. And that is the, the, the gift of faith. Uh, and I just broke it down real, real simple. Um, and and I, I, I like, you know, there, there's faith comes by hearing the word. Faith, you know, that we see because of what we do, what we listen to, and what we surround ourselves with. We believe God. We trust God. And we have that. But the gift of faith is supersedes that it's something that you do not conjure up naturally it comes spiritually now one of the things that's kind of my mind you have to remember as a as a christian you're more in tune to you're more spiritual than you're natural let me put it that way as a christian you're more spiritual than you're natural you all right okay make sure you're in the right church so we're we're, we're christians and, and you just start. I don't, I don't know what. We want to be, I mean, a, a born again experience is a spiritual experience. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Your hair color didn't change. Your, your lips didn't get any bigger. You know, your legs didn't grow any, any longer. I mean, nothing happened. But, but everything changed on the inside. <clears throat> Amen. Yeah. Everything changed spiritually. And, and we know that. Uh, but the problem is, is then we, we, forget, we forget that. I always say this, I don't, because this is what I fight against. When I say fight against, this is what I will not settle for, that, we, that the only revelation we have of him is, is that salvation. Or in other words, we don't proceed any further than our first revelation of who the Holy Spirit is. Does that make any sense? Holy Spirit is the one who indwells you and saves you. And thank God for that, for that experience. But I don't want that to be the only experience you have with him. Okay? And so the Holy Spirit comes in and we have it. There's so much more. And everything and reason why there's so much, you know, the, the, um, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in you gets you ready for heaven. You cannot go to heaven without Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. Right? And that's, what it, and that's the definition of a Christian. A Christian is one in whom the Spirit of God dwells. Okay, because you gave him access by confessing you, you're, you're a sinner, you're a savior, and Jesus is it. He comes in, he, he fills you. Okay, the spirit filled life or the baptism in the Holy Spirit comes in and overwhelms you. That gets you ready for earth. <laughs> okay, explain. Okay, I will. I mean, they didn't say explain, I could hear it say explain. You ain't got time to say explain. Explain. I mean, so, so thank God for, so there's no greater miracle, we're talking about miracles again, no greater miracle than that of salvation. Let's go ahead and settle that fact. I mean, you can be, I mean, I mean the worst, the, the worst I mean, diagnosis that the doctor can give you, where there's no hope, no, no nothing, and then you, get, then you get healed by God. That even though it's, it's, it's enormous and it's wonderful, that will not supersede the fact that one day you are a sinner heading to hell yeah. and now you're not. Yeah. So there's nothing that can happen to you that is, that is greater than that of salvation. 
And, and that's a miracle. If you don't believe it, everybody say, oh, I know it was, because that was a mess. Right? I mean, we were a gummed up mess. Amen? And so, um, so that's, what, that's, what, that's what that is. And so, so that's the greatest miracle. Um, so anyway, we receive the miracle of salvation, miracle of salvation, and that gets us ready for heaven. Right? Gets us ready to heaven. We're on our way to heaven. And that's your ticket has been punched. You're on your way to heaven. But guess what? Unless today you got saved, you walked outside and, and walked out on 17, got hit by a truck, you're going to be here for a while. Everybody say amen. Thank God for that. So if I'm a born-again believer, if I'm a Christian, I'm going to be here for a while. That's what our hopes are. I need something to help me navigate through this earth. Y'all with me now? Because it was easy for me to participate in the world when I was of the world. But I'm not of the world anymore. I have separated myself. That's what death is. I have separated myself. So now God, here God, me God, now God, I need some help. I mean, I got what I needed to get to heaven, but I'm not ready to go right now. I'm sure it's a fine place and we're going to get there. We're going to be there forever and ever and ever. But right now, I want to stay here if it's okay with you for a while. All right? So while I'm here, I don't want to, you know, I'm going to need some help to navigate through, through some things. And so if you allow him, the Holy Spirit will, will just completely baptize you with his gifts. And those gifts is what helps you navigate through this earth until it's time for you to make it to heaven. Amen? Well, give God a hand clap of praise. Isn't he good? We sing about good and we don't know what good is. <laughs> we don't know what good is. God says, not only, yeah, I'm going to leave you here to, I'm going to leave you here to fight the devil and, uh, you know, with the devil and, and all the temptations and the trials and, and tribulations and everything that goes along with it. Oh, I'm going to leave you here. But guess what? I'm going to give you everything you need to navigate through that junk. And our problem is most of the time we just don't receive it. We don't get it. So, uh, so the power gifts are very important with that because it gives, how many knows we need power? We need power over the enemy which is trying to come against us. So, so, the, so the gift of faith, of the power of faith, um, is, 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 is something you receive. So it's a rece- it don't do anything, it just receives. Miracles, just like with healings, is active. It does something. And so they work together. It's like I told you a while ago that wisdom, in this case, if you got words of wisdom and words of knowledge work together, then faith works together with working their miracles. Our supernatural faith works together with the gift of, uh, of healing. I can't wait. Next week, we're going to deal with healing if, if, if we're good tonight and get through this. Um, so I'm here. I'm at when a miracle is, so we're, so we're right here. When a miracle is in manifestation, is in manifestation, there is a supernatural intervention by God in the ordinary course of nature. How do we know it's a miracle? Because, because it goes against the known laws of nature. How many know that nature has laws? There, there's, there's not but so far it can go. There's, thank God for doctors. Thank God for nurses. Thank God for scientists. Thank God for all the, 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 the smart people on the, in the world and, and the gifts that they have in, intellectually and everything that goes on in there. But there's not, but how I many know there, there's limits to what man can do? And then once we get to that limit, no matter what it is, but there's no limits to what God can do. So where that limit stops, and we say we can't do it, so it, now we need something to go against nature, to go against the laws of nature. And that's what a miracle is. A miracle is that which goes against or supersedes the known laws of nature in its hurled or it's known to be an act of a supernatural being. It's a miracle. Something supernatural happens. Something from outside this world, something outside of our has taken place. And, uh, and there's a lot of times we need miracles. We need miracles. Well, the supernatural gift of faith helps us to receive those miracles and activate those miracles. Okay? So that's why I've been teaching about that. So I want to I teach you. I, I've, been, I mean, I've been in this. I'm just really in this. Um, I always like to share Wednesday night where I'm at. I, I just kind of like we just sit around my house, you know, or wherever at the store. I remember sitting around the store and just talking. And if you ain't from the country, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Because y'all think stores like belts. Why would you go to belts and sit around and talk? Now, I'm talking about a store where you got drink crates you sit on and benches and Pepsi Colas and four corner square nails and moon pies. I feel like I was at a store last week. I mean, that's why, you know, you take on the nature. Moon pies. Got it. I mean, Holy Spirit was in this place. Anytime you got a moon pie in here, gee whiz. 
I mean, it's like, are you kidding me right now? I'm trying to go to 2 Kings. Moon Pile's got me all stirred up. <laughs> Y'all was here Saturday night. I mean, confession is good for the soul, so let me go ahead and confess. I was here Saturday night, and I was there to study, or Saturday afternoon, it wasn't night. It was afternoon, and they done had everything else set up, and I got done in my office. I walked in here to the front, you know, just check on things, walk around here and pray. And I walked around there, man, and it was like the hallelujah chorus. <gasps> Look there, there was like 10,000 moon pies over there. <laughs> them, and all them drinks, you know, they're sodas if you're from the north. They're just drinks if you're from the south. It's a drink. Anyway, that's, that's different. <laughs> so right by my, I don't know if that means I got issues, but right by myself, I ate a moon pie and drunk a Pepsi Cola right, right by myself. <laughs> by myself. I actually took my truck, got my driver right down the road, didn't. Didn't tell Kim, I hadn't ate dinner or nothing. And how it was so good. <laughs> I was so happy. I was like, what in the world? It don't take much. A Pepsi Cola and a Moon Pie. I was like, what else, what else is there? What else is there? And so I don't, do, I don't, I don't allow y'all to do anything. I don't go ahead of you first and lead the way. So I just want to make sure I, I tested it. It was, it was good. I do that. That's what leaders do. They lead. Leaders lead. And I needed to lead that. And I felt like I did. Anyway, we're talking about 2 Kings chapter number 2. Oh, my point was, not moon pies, but my point was I just wanted to, oh, sharing. And so I like to, I mean, I like to, um, right now just, you know, the whole thing was Sunday about man of God. I had, I had something totally different, but I felt like I want to go into scriptures and just repetitionally show so many different places in what a man of God is. Because I believe repetition is the master teacher. And if we start hearing it, we'll start believing it. Hey, man, as you can hear something enough, you just start believing it. And um, so anyway, I'm going to do that a little bit again tonight. So I want to talk about miracles real fast and show you some 2 Kings 2.14. Elijah taken, I think we ended on this last week a little bit, but Elijah taken Elijah's mantle and dividing a stream with the sweep of his mantle. And the mantle was just a prayer shawl. I had it up here last week, uh, or two weeks ago. The, the prayer shawl. You remember, you remember the prayer shawl? It's just a shawl. It's just, a, it's just, it's just what it is. And, and, and he, he, so he just took that. And let's read 2 Kings 2.14. And 2 Kings 2.14 says, And he took the mantle, which is just that prayer shawl, what it was, Elijah, that had fallen from him. And he struck the water and says, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also struck the water, it divided this way and that. And Elijah walked across. That's like going down to the, to the waterway down here at Oceanau and walking up to it, not at the bridge, but down there in between Sunset Bridge and Oceanau Bridge. And like, well, I can't swim that. And so you just had a you just had a, a piece of cloth and you just took it and you hit the water with it and it just opened up like that and you walked across. That's what happened. That goes against the known laws of nature. Right? That's a miracle. How many believe the Bible? From cover to cover. That means from cover to cover. Right? We believe all of it. From the very beginning to the very end of it. You have to believe that. Why is that story in there for us to believe in miracles? It can happen. If no other reason than to prove that God is a God of miracles. And he works miracles through his people. Amen? Anyway, so here in our notes, that was a supernatural intervention by God in the ordinary course of nature. Raise your hand if you agree with that. I mean, we know it's in the Bible. No, it, it happened. That's why it's in the Bible. It won't put in the Bible, therefore it happened. It happened, so it was put in the Bible. Okay. Exodus 7 and 8 brought up a little bit Sunday. Um, dust being turned into insects. No other the plays that followed was the gift of the working of miracles in operation. That was in the second book of the Bible. That everything, the, the water turned to blood, the, the lice, the gnats, the frogs, everything that happened. How many, the locusts, the pitch darkness. Just here. I'm not talking about dark and you see a little bit. I'm talking about being so dark you can feel it. Heavy darkness. That is a miracle. That is a miracle. So the Bible's teaching us here that, that, that miracles are real. Miracles are real. 
I love this story when First Kings, let's flip over to, I'm sorry, can you just turn over to First Kings? Uh, First Kings chapter number 17 uh, and verse 8 and 16. I'm just going to read a little bit at night, but it's going to take your time and just see what the Bible is teaching us about this. I love this story. Um, the Bible says that the word of the Lord came to him saying, talking about Elijah, I'm in 1 Kings chapter number 17 and verse 9 now. Arise and go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a, wi a widow there to look after you, provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath and came to the gate of the city. Indeed, the, the widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water and a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called her and says, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread. Remember, there's a famine in the land, okay? I do not have, I do not have, I do not have any bread, only a handful of flour in a bin. Just a little bit of flour in a bin. And a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and then die. That's bad. Bad times. I got just enough oil to make one cake and just enough flour to mix with the oil. I'm going to get me some sticks to put my little wood stove here. I'm going to get it hot enough to cook me a cake. I'm going to put it in half. I'm going to eat a little bit. It's going to be the last thing we eat. Then we're going to start it. We're going to die. Okay, we're going to die. Now, let me stop right here. I'm going to skip real fast. I'm going to go to verse 17. I'm going to go back and finish this, but this is free. Now, it happened after these things that the son of the woman who owned the house became sick, and his sickness was so serious that there was no breath left in him. What happened to him? What does that mean? He died. Parents, be careful what you speak of your children. I got this underlining all in my Bible. Just be careful. Okay? Anyway, so let's go back. What did she say in verse 12? We're going to eat this food and we're going to die. And she did and he did, but that's not my point, my story. I just want to throw that in and so you know. Verse 13. And Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go and do as you. You have said, but make me a small cake from it first. And bring, she just said, dude, I probably got enough for me and my son. You want me first? <laughs> bring it first. First, it notes a second. The first cake is going to be the only cake. And he wants it. Right? Let's make sure we understand this story. Do not fear. Go and go and do not fear because fear is opposite of faith. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first. Bring it to me, and afterwards, make some of you and yourself and your sons. Then you left over, of course. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day of the Lord sends rain on the earth. In other words, God's going to provide for you until this famine is over. So she went, and she just said, she's got a little bit of, she's got a little cruise of oil and a little bit of flour. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah, and she and he and her household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor the jar of oil did it run dry according to the word of the Lord which was spoken by Elijah. It didn't say she went to Publix and somebody gave her some, some oh, I'm sorry, she didn't go to Food Lion and go and, um, Food Lion represented up here, and, and give them, somebody just gave her flour or somebody gave her oil. It just miraculously appeared. Every day. She got the last flour out, she came back the next day, and there was more. She got the last cruise of oil, put it up in there, put it in there on her ship, came back the next day, need some oil. Well, you know why? Because that's what the Word of God said. And you can't fear what the Word of God said. You've got to have faith in what the Word of God says. Even though it's empty, it's not. Even though it's out, a flower, but it's not. Somehow or another, supernaturally, God is going to put flour in the flower box and oil in the, box, in the, in the jar. 
And he did. So it rained on the earth and everything started getting better. And now she go to store and buy it. Is that a miracle? Yes, sir. It is. Yes. I mean, if you're out of oil and you, you, you put it in, in, your, in, in your pantry and woke up next morning and you're going to go get oil and the same empty bottle you put in there came back the next morning and it's full of oil, I'm here to tell you, I would sit down and I'm sure you could take over tonight. Could that be a miracle? Amen. Why is that story in the Bible? To give us, to give us faith. To believe the word. To believe that, believe the word. It's in the Bible. If God said it, we believe it. Amen. So that's there. Let's do another one. 2 Kings 4. 2 Kings 4. Just, just right here. 2 Kings 4, 1 and 7. I like this one too. 2 Kings 4, 1 and 7. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elijah saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons and his slaves. Oh my goodness. Hear what she just said? Stop it again. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried to Elijah. So he is, he's a prophet. I mean, he, 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 he's working with Elisha. He's, a, he's, a, he's on Elisha's team. Elisha's a great prophet. And, he's, and he died. This is, this is on the other side of the world, you know, thousands of years ago, where if a woman didn't have a man, she's in a mess. And she's saying, foul here. I got two sons. My husband's, your servant, just died. Not servant as it, he, he's on his team. Just died. And they're fixing to come and take my sons because I don't have any money to pay the creditors of the bills that he left behind. Because he knows he's going to die. That's, that's, the first, that's the first verse. That's bad. So Elijah said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me what do you have in the house? And she said, your maidservant has nothing in this house but a jar of oil. She's got one jar of oil. That's all she's got. Then he says, go borrow vessels from every house. Empty vessels. Go to every house, knock on the doors, and say, do you have any empty vessels? I don't want nothing in it. Just empty vessels. Yeah, I got some around back. Can I borrow them? Yes. Go get them. That's what he told her. He says, go borrow from every house, verse 3, and from all your neighbors, neighbors, empty vessels, and don't gather just a few. Get a bunch of them. Boy, that's what faith does, man. Faith expects. Amen? Yeah, hey, I'm going to get them. Hey, Gertrude, you still got that old vessel you had sitting on the back porch. Can I have it? Hmm? You tell me all that? Yeah, just give it to me. I don't care. Did you go get it? Right? That's the only one? Yeah, that went home. No else was home. See, let her know in front. No, go get, go get a bunch. Don't come back in here with one or two. Get a bunch. Verse 4. And when you have come in with all the vessels, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons. Then pour it into those vessels and set aside the full ones. So what he's saying? He says, go in there with the one full vessel of oil you have. And whenever you go get those vessels, go to everybody's house, put them in this one room. So the whole room now is full of empty vessels. Full of. Let's say there's, let's say there's 50. And she's got one vessel. So she comes in. He says, I want you to take that one Vessel of oil. And I want you to go in there where there's 50. And I want you and your sons to shut the door. Okay? Verse 5. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her. And she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels was full that she says to her son, bring me another vessel. So I just said it was 50. I mean, the Bible don't say, so we can, my sermon, I can pick 50. So there's 50. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. Come on, math class, let's do the math. If there's 50 vessels, she said, bring me another empty vessel. He said, there's not another empty vessel. 
That means they've took that one vessel and filled up 50. Now here's the part. Here's the part that's cool. There is not another, and then the oil ceased. Boy, I could, I could preach a revival on this. But anyway, I'm trying to teach you something. So they t- you take, if I took this one, this little, this little bottle of water, if I stood up here today and I lined up 50 bottles and I took this one and I just kept on filling and kept on filling, by the time I got about four or five, y'all be losing your mind. The old pastor's Houdini up there, man. He's got something going on. I mean, right? But this is a, this is a miracle. This is a miracle. This is a woman that is so broke, her husband has died. And they're going to come and get her sons. And, and sell them into slavery. Just so she can live in her house. She probably doesn't want to live because she's going to, her, her son's not going to be there. They're going to at least pay off her debts, how she makes it after that. But not anymore. And she came out and told the man of God, told Elijah, he says, go sell the oil and pay your debt. And you and your sons shall live on the rest. There was enough oil in those vessels that she went to the store and sold it. They gave her enough money to go pay all the bills that was owed because of the sickness and what they owed and everything. They didn't have to take their sons. And then there was still, see, when God gives, he don't give just enough. He always gives more than enough. Amen. And the rest of it, she went, and put in the bank, and that's what they lived off of. Because she had one vessel of oil, and she brought, now what if she didn't have any faith? She only, she only, she only went after three. Well, they don't take but two or three, because this ain't going to work anyway. No, she had to believe the word of God. It was spoken by, Eli- it wasn't Elisha's word, it was God's word. Guys, we have to receive a word. Sometimes God would get, see, that's what, that's what, that's supernatural faith working with a miracle. The miracle would have never taken place if this woman didn't keep on bringing in the vessels. See, people that have supernatural faith, you do stuff when it makes absolutely positively no sense. The vessels that she was borrowing was vessels, I've studied out, is vessels that handle or houses only oil. So in other words, when she went in there to the store to sell the oil, they knew it was oil because of the vessel that it was in. So she didn't go and say, give me your water vessels. She didn't say, give me your flour vessels. She said, give me your oil vessels. The ones you ain't using around that are empty. Came in back knowing that the only thing could go in there was oil. And by faith, by faith, she went in that door. She didn't realize it, but it wasn't just, I believe it's like, it's like, it's like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I believe that these three people here was, was, a, was a type of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Because whenever her and her two sons went in that door, in that room, I believe somebody else went in there with her. I believe it was the Holy Spirit of God. Because he's wherever the Word of God is. Because he's there to make the Word of God true. And he went in there, and she kept on, and she kept on, she kept on pouring, she kept on pouring, and it didn't run out. When it said it ceased, that meant it finally went empty. When did it quit? When did it become empty when there was no more vessels? Now, we used to preach this on the, on the road and tell people as long as the, and I, I'll preach it in my church right here. Let me go and tell you, as long as there are empty vessels, the Holy Spirit would never cease pouring out. As long as you make yourself a vessel and say, God, I'm not much, but God, I'm here. I'm an empty vessel. I'm not full of pride. I'm not full of self-centeredness. I'm not full of what I can do. I'm not full of what happened in the past. I'm not full of I'm a victim. I'm just an empty vessel, God. And you declare if you can fill that woman's vessel with oil, I know you can fill my vessel full of oil, God. And the Holy Spirit will not quit pouring out oil into your life until you say, I'm completely full. And we'll never get full of the Holy Spirit of God. 
Amen? That's my problem when people think they've got, that's my problem. Sam, now, now I've got to go down this path because this is what we're dealing with. That's my problem with people who have beliefs, who have be, be, belief systems that feel like we've got the Holy Spirit figured out. Most people, it says, well, signs have ceased. God doesn't work that way anymore. What we're saying is, we know Holy Spirit so point, we know his limitations. No, the only limitation the Holy Spirit has is whenever you shut, whenever you put a top on top of your vessel and say, I don't need anything else from God. I got all I need. Thank you very much. Then he'll cease and he'll find another vessel. Go to a dead, dried up religious church. Can I preach for a minute? That don't want nothing else from God other than we're going to start at 11 and we're going to get out here at 12. We're going to sing a song. We're going to tell you what's in the bulletin and we're going to pat you on the back on your way out. Make sure we don't offend you. How many knows there's no empty vessels in there? Go to another church full of people coming here and say, God, I'm just an empty vessel. I need, a, I need a spirit of miracles. I need a spirit of faith. I need a spirit of wisdom. I need a spirit of knowledge. I need you to touch my family. I need you to touch my finances. I need you to touch my life. I need you to touch my mind, God. I need you to touch this world. And when the Holy Spirit, he is searching and he is looking for empty vessels and he will not quit pouring out until there's no more vessels to be poured out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The reason why God is, you turn out this little red bug and, and you see Wednesday night, you got a you got the house full of people. We, we got children everywhere. We got youth people. We got, I have, have preachers telling me, said, you still doing Wednesday night? I said, I, I, I'm going, don't, don't take us anyway. I said, I, was, I would quit Sunday morning before I touch Wednesday night. We are powerhouse up in here Wednesday night. I mean, there's a lot of diversity, a lot of stuff going on here. I mean, I'm not doing either one, but you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. But, but anyway, my, my point is, why is God doing what he's doing? We just, we just, we just poured concrete up, 26,000 square feet worth of concrete just poured up. Right by there and just, just look at it, man. Just, it's just, if you're up there in the daytime, just glisten in the sun. Monday, they're going to start, they're going to start laying out the steel girders up there. So maybe, maybe by next week this time, we might have a couple of steel beams put up up there. What are them crazy nuts doing down there on 17 Red Bug Deer and all this mess going on, gas is sky high and everything else? Because the devil's still working, so are we. And the Holy Spirit, and Holy Spirit, well, listen to me, Holy Spirit will not quit pouring out as long as there's empty, hungry vessels. Say, God, I know what's going on in the gas pump. I know what's going on in the Ukraine. I know what's going on in the world, God. But we are hungry vessels, God, and we can't do it without you, Lord. And if we get in the room as a hungry vessel and slam the door and say, God, fill me full to the very top. If you go in there and tell me, I don't need none of that. Thank you very much. You know what he'll do? He'll cease. He'll go right at the same door he came in. And he'll find an empty vessel. And Gertrude's going to get hers and you're not going to get yours. And you're all going to be in a mess. <laughs> if your name is Gertrude, God bless you, sister. You're getting it. <laughs> Amen. Now let's get back to the point. Now, is that a miracle or not? Do y'all believe this? Do y'all believe this story? If not, let's just rip it. Should I, should I just rip this page out of my Bible? Come on. Come on. Come on. Just one. Let's rip it. Let's just throw it away. We don't believe. You believe? We, I know you do. Do we believe this stuff? Do we, do we believe this stuff? You believe this story? It is no secret what God can do. What he did for others, he'll do for you. Come on, we sing this song, but do you really believe it? Do you really believe that this woman was going to have to sell her sons unless she got a word from God? But she did get a word from God, and she operated by faith in what the word of God said. And because of that, not only did she not have to sell her sons, but I bet you she was just giving them, here, you need help? Here, you need help? You believe, and that's a miracle. It's like, girl, where'd you get where'd you get this oil from? Huh? Where'd you get this oil from, girl? God told, and then she told the story. They said, all right. 
All right, yeah, okay. All right, girl, okay, whatever. You know, old Larry, he, yeah, he wanted as dumb as I thought it was. He done, he done put some oil back there in the back. Yeah, I, all right. <laughs> I got you. Let people believe what you want to believe. It's not, it's, it's, it's not up to you to make them believe it. It's just up to you to tell them what happened. All right, so we believe it? You believe it? You believe that God can do something that's that, that supernatural miracle for her? She can do it for you? You get in a tight, you get in a pickle, you get in a tough situation, you think God can do it? Or do you know God can do it? Oh, we know God can do it. Right? Why is it in here? It's not in here because it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible because it happened. Okay? Oh, all right. I think we're having like ice cream sandwiches kind of things tonight. So just in case you're wondering <laughs> what it is. See, you hear with me, I'll let you know some things. I'll let you know some stuff. I mean, I'm not, I, not all going to ask me a sandwich. They're just different. They're just, ice, they're just sandwiches type stuff. <laughs> oh, man. Summer nights. John 6, 5 through 14, Jesus, I ain't going to read it. Jesus fed the 5,000. A couple of fishes and five loaves of bread. Fed 5,000 5, 5, men. How many there was? Some of them brought their wives with them. Some of them brought their children with them. M most of the storm, I believe, it was, there was 12,000 people there. Five loaves, two fishes. How many believe that's a miracle? Do you believe it happened? Or do we need to turn to John 6, 5, 14 and just rip it out of the Bible? We ain't going to do no such a thing. Because it's a miracle. How is it a miracle? We can't figure out how it happened. It goes against our limitations. Have you ever had something that's standing in front of you that the answer how you're going to get out of it is past your limitations? This week, yeah, it happens. But then you start saying, you're a God of miracles. And I'm, I'm a faithful person. I believe it can happen. You know what I love about this story real fast? We love this story. Can I just tell you real fast? Well, I love, you, you know who my favorite, I could have you here all night, you trying to figure out who my favorite person is in this story. Are the five loaves and two fishes? Oh, the little boy? No. The disciples? There? No. The people there? No. Jesus? Well, he's my favorite person. You understand what I'm saying? No. All this kind of stuff. You know who my favorite person is? You want to take us down? Somebody. Who said that? You heard me preach that. <laughs> <sighs> Thank you, Terry. That's, that, sh that shows commitment, girls. Been here. <laughs> heard me. It's the mama who woke up that morning before he left. Said, wait, 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 son. Here. Let me, let me pack you a lunch. Let me, let me just, let me just, let me just do, it don't make any sense, but it just don't make a lick of sense. Let me pick, give you five loaves of bread and two fish. Now, be honest with you, see, that was too much for him. But she just felt like, hey, sometimes you, has God ever told you to do something that's like, okay, God. If she wouldn't have packed that lunch, then that had gone down to Kentucky Fried Chicken and McDonald's trying to make that work. But they didn't because she packed the lunch. What does that teach us? When God tells you to do something that don't make any sense, just do it. And he'll turn that to a miracle. He'll multiply that, and he'll use it to feed thousands. Amen? So that's a miracle. Um, I don't know why I put this in here, but I did. I ain't going to go over it. It's just too, we're having too much fun. Acts 5, 1 through 10, Ananias and Sapphira, them jokers lied to God, and they dropped dead right there on the floor. I mean, that was a miracle. Well, nothing wrong with them. Well, nothing wrong with them. No high blood pressure, no diabetes, no COVID, no nothing. They just, bam, bam, fell right onto the floor. Because they lied. And didn't have to. They lied because the other dude gave all his land, and, and, and nobody cared. They just trying to keep up with that joker and came in here and just lied, trying to be like somebody else. Get off social media, people. They'll kill you. I'm telling you, get off the junk, trying to be like everybody else. Okay, Whatever. So that was a miracle. Is that a miracle? Huh? Two very healthy people, wealthy, 
fell off, and it just dropped dead. So watch out now. If you, if you want miracles, I mean, miracles happen in all kinds of shapes and sizes. All right, so we're going to, okay, three minutes. The working, let's just read this. The working of miracles will deliver you from the danger without being harmed at all. The working of miracles will deliver you from danger without being harmed at all. The working of miracles will deliver you from danger. I use that here, and you can go home and read the story, but I'm going, I'm going to read it. Uh, just my little paraphrase here because I knew I wouldn't have time. Paul did not stand up and rebuke the storm, but through the gift of faith, through the word of God, Paul had supernatural faith to believe for protection. Paul received a miracle even though they went through the storm and the ship was severely damaged, they received protection. Paul was on a, had left Italy to go on, on, on a journey, long, long story short, and Paul said, we don't need to go. We don't need to go. And they said, no, we're going. They, they listened to the, the captain instead of him and said, no, we're going. They went out there. The, the, the waves was back. Really go home and read this. Acts, Acts 27. One, it's, just, it's just the whole Acts 27. And they went out there. An angel showed up on the boat. It's going all over the place. And, and, and God, and one thing I love about it, think about this. God did, not, God did not deliver him from the storm. The boat they, 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 had a, they had to beach the boat. It was a mess. They were they're throwing mess out. They were about to throw prison. They were throwing mess out. I mean, it was, it was a mess, man. It, it was like being out there under a hurricane. It was, it was a mess. It was a nor'easter going up there. I mean, just a, you know, just, just, just a whole thing going on. And they get there, and the boat was to people. They had to swim. They had to get through it. Sometimes God will not deliver you from the storm. But he'll give you the faith to get through the storm. See, we're always looking for deliverance from the storm. And God says, no, I'm going to give you the faith. And you're going to see my miracle work in hand because what should have took you out won't. Because of your faith, what, what, they all should have died. There's no, there was, there was, they thought they were gone. There's no way nobody made it through this. But they made it. They made it because they got a word from God. Oh, you're going to make it. Your ship's going to be torn to pieces. You're going to lose everything. You're going to lose everything on that ship. You're going to lose everything. All the supplies are holding out yard. But guess what? I promise you, you're going to get on dry land. Everything's going to be okay. And sometimes that's all the word you need. God, it's a miracle I'm in here today. And I'm here to tell you, you will, if you haven't, you will have an experience like that, that God will give you faith to receive a miracle. And even though it could have been better, but that's not the point. God wants you to look back on it. And when you look back on it, you're going to say, that was a miracle that I'm where I am right now. And God taught me something that I can't expect a miracle. Amen. So that's what happened there. So understand this about miracles. Understand about faith. Because it's like, well, it, because it's a different here in Mark 4, 39. Jesus stood on the ship and said, peace be still. And the storm ceased. And all that was on the boat was delivered from the storm. Sometimes, so sometimes you'll go through a storm and you only have peace over a storm that you have peace in. If you don't have peace in the storm, you can't have peace over the storm. So sometimes God will give you peace in the storm, and in that storm, you'll figure out, I've got authority over that storm because I got peace in that storm, and God will give you supernatural faith, and, you're, and like Jesus did, and you will speak in that situation, and it'll just completely die down. Now watch this. Here's my little paragraph. Paul received the gift of faith to receive a miracle through the storm while Jesus received the gift of working her miracles to work her miracle in the storm. So sometimes God will give you faith to get through the storm, and sometimes God will give you the work of miracles to destroy the storm and lay it down. God knows what's best. Amen? And we're looking for either one. Amen? All right. So um, that's it. We did that. We're getting to get. There's a couple more. Acts 8 and 6. You want to read about Philip. Acts 6 and 8. You want to read about Stephen. Acts 15 and 12 is about Paul. Acts 19 and 11 is about Paul. So it's those of you guys who love just love this stuff and love studying the Bible. There's some more scriptures you're going to read. Read them. Get yourself full of the Bible talking about miracles in your life. And then get out of here and expect to see miracles. Yeah. Amen. We're not going to roll over and die. With God can do something great. All right. So, Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for supernatural gifts of faith. We thank you, Lord, that that faith causes us to work miracles. And, God, we just expect miracles in our lives. God, we don't know what's lying and waiting, what the enemy has been scheming and planning to try to throw up against us. But dear God, we know, Lord, if you, if you care for a little widow woman, God is getting ready to sell her sons, Lord.
that God, you, you care about us. There's, there's no respect to our persons. They don't care how big they are. don't care how lesser they are. don't care where they are. don't care about the circumstances, God. You're God enough, Lord. You know exactly where we are and what we need. God, may we have faith to receive miracle-working powers in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. God bless you. I love you. Uh, Thank you for joining us today. We are so glad to connect with you. If you are new to HP and want to get more involved, I invite you to text 910-501-2005. Or you can download our church app and stay up to date on everything going on around here. I also want to tell you three ways you can give today. You can give through text. Text any amount to 84321. If you've never set that up, it only takes a moment. You can give right through your phone at any time. Second, you can give online through our website. Go to highestpraisechurch.com and click the giving tab. You can give right there online. Finally, you can give through mail. You can send in your gift to P.O. Box 1189, Shalote, North Carolina, 28459. And if you're looking for a way to plug in, to serve, or be a part of what's going on here at Highest Praise, join us for our next step class. It's the first Sunday of every month at 9 a.m. We are so glad you joined us today. God is not done with your life. If you need prayer, have any questions, you can reach us through social media or you can call our office at 910-754-4809. We love you, highest praise, and the best is now.